Good morning, folks. Yesterday I closed with an offhand remark about the fun starting and, well, the mantle agreed. We've got an incredible advancement in solar climate forcing, while the advanced cosmology students among us will need to have ears open until the end. But let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star was a relatively quiet one. Solar flaring stayed in A range, but for the smallest and short-lived B-class X-ray event, which was actually driven by a plasma surge from the former sunspot group. I say former because all umbra are gone, even though surface magnetism remains. A dense filament extending southward became an outflow and then dissipated in the corona about 100,000 miles to the south. Come back to Earth where plasma streams of the solar wind are calming intensity and Earth's magnetosphere is relaxed as well. This morning, in addition to the coronal holes north and south, we can see the transequatorial opening coming in from the left side behind that former active region. As I mentioned, the ground got active yesterday, but did so more than 500 kilometers deep. If you saw our 2017 conference presentation, you'll remember this exact pattern that keeps rocking this continent. High pressure to the south, lows to the north, Global electric circuit pushing down to the ground from the ionosphere and northward along that fault line. During this time, the blot echoes began, but we saw continuing depth advancement until yesterday's large rupture, which hit the transition zone between upper and lower mantle, where this hypothesis dictates the flow of global electric circuit does connect to the deep. The ESA has no plans on letting NASA's icon and gold have all the fun. Their storm hunter to search for lightning phenomenon is a critical aspect of understanding mechanisms of the global electric circuit. It is up and away, and observers hope for the best for this mission as well. Today's featured links also include what is being called the most distant star ever. Right side we can see at the arrow where a star has appeared at some point over the last decade. Very cool. Today's top story is some of the top European solar terrestrial physicists, including observer's favorite, Usoskin, demonstrating that the actual irradiance difference between the Maunder periods and modern maxima is 25 to 40 percent underestimated. This puts the sun and cosmic rays in a much greater role. You can see the old versus new graphs here. The big variance is the new data, blue and green is the old. This comports with lack of energy and increased cloud production expected during the Little Ice Age. Cosmologists, we have two more missing dark matter scenarios and the first one really has to hurt. No gamma signature in the nearest galaxy, Andromeda, a perfect candidate to study and one of the best suited instruments to observe it, and they have wiped the 1 to 100 TeV mass particles off the scale. Now on the other side of the mass scale is the sub-GeV or MeV size particles and smaller. They have constrained the range of 500 keV or 0.5 MeV up to 4 MeV. And to put this in context, you'll need to catch up with Dr. Meyer's description of current searches. He has explained how much of the GeV range has been excluded, and they are now looking larger and smaller. Today, we saw constraints on both sides of that scale. We've got our wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.